Hello everybody, I'm Jordan Thomas and I'm working with uh, Dr. Bing Oyoung, uh, Leo Lee, Shadi Bar as well, um, on the modeling of an underwater inflatable structure under different environmental conditions. I just want to thank all three of them for being awesome to work with over this past summer. So uh, Shadi kind of went over this a little bit. Um, during her presentation, but I'll kind of give you a refresher. Um, so sonar sensors are important because we want to be able to monitor the ocean. You know, we want to know what's going on with fish, wildlife, uh, the ocean floor, potentially submarines or ships. So we need sonar sensors. The problem with current sonar sensors is they're not necessarily compact or easy to deploy. And the solution that this project gives is a two-way compression method. What that is, is first of all, um, using a co-prime sensing algorithm to decrease the amount of sensors needed without sacrificing any accuracy. That's being worked on, as Shadi said, with Temple University. And then physical compression, which is what I'm working on. So you saw this animation uh, during our presentation as well, but I'll just kind of show it to you again. Uh, so it gets deployed from a ocean vehicle of some sort or a helicopter. AUV is what we're focusing on and it expands to full size using some sort of inflation agent, whether it be a foam or water. So specifically what my work involves is simulating the behavior of the structure in different environmental conditions. So that would be using ANSYS computational fluid dynamic software. Basically, uh, if you just take one of those shapes and put it in a virtual fluid domain, simulate the current flowing over it uh, at increasing velocity, which is what you see on that graph there, Reynolds number is directly proportional to velocity, and measure the coefficient of drag. We want a low coefficient of drag because you know, as you increase the coefficient of drag, you run into issues like vortex shedding, which will create unnecessarily, unnecessary turbulence and create wear on the structure and decrease the accuracy as well of the sensing. So, as expected, they each had a predictable drag behavior, all four of those geometries. The best was the ellipse, so that would be definitely considered for future research following prototypes. So into some more concrete and physical type things, uh, we have some prototypes here. First one was just a regular you know, cube design on either end of the inflatable tube. Pretty simple, just a, a port on the side there for some sort of inflation agent to enter. And then the second prototype was a bit more easy to change out the sensor nodes if you wanted to because those attach to that cloth uh, sleeve that you see at the bottom of that picture there. The sensor node is that little piece um, to the right side of that image. And then the third and final or current prototype that we have is actually here right now. Uh, it's this right here. And it's very long and awkward, difficult to carry, but <laughs> um, it has a, or should have a threaded piece on the end of these nodes here, so that you can change them out if you want. Uh, these are also the sensors, at least modeled here by this piece of uh, cylindrical uh, PLA 3D printed, and those could be changed out using zip ties if you would like. So we actually took this specific prototype that you see in front of you and tested it in water in a tank here at the Boca campus. And you can see we changed it to vertical orientation because you can allow the weight to pull down the structure and help with the inflation. Then the pump goes in the water and inflates it the rest of the way. So next steps in this research would be to simulate this full system that you see in front of you in ANSYS and see how the mooring behaves and how each of these nodes behaves 
uh, position wise when the current hits it. Uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you.